Uh, Paul, you want to introduce why we're here? Who are we? So we are Trip and Kosher, and we call our segments Getting Baked with Paula. Although I'm not baking today, today we are in a totally cool bakery. We're in Brooklyn at a place Brooklyn. called Brooklyn Artisan Bakery. But what's really cool about this place for me is that they have the kind of pastries that I learned how to make in Paris, France, and now they're here and they're kosher. So here, let me just show you one thing here. I haven't tried this yet. This is basically like, I don't know, what would we call this? Cinnamon bun meets a French pastry thing, right? What are, I, it's a cinnamon bun with cream cheese frosting. And you're not, the expert here, no, I don't know anything. No, it's not a cinnamon bun, because look, it's not like yeast dough. So here, I'm gonna open this up over here. Show it so, off to the camera. All right, I want you to Sorry. see inside this fantastic pastry. So the difference between this and a regular cinnamon bun. So this is made with sort of like a croissant dough. It's kind of what they call a laminated dough. You roll out a dough and you put butter on top and you fold it and you roll it and fold it and that's how you get all these great layers. I was gonna say, when you did open it up, I, I immediately understood what you're talking about because it's not that sticky doughy, it's not no, the sticky, I love look, that. Look, look. But when she pulled it open, you could see the layering. Like these layers, uh, okay? See, how, they see layer? how they're thin, they're thin, they're really thin. There you go, you like this. It. That's I why I it's called some. laminated dough because you can see through it. I'm not sure about that. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have them. This is so good. My standard for a really good pastry is 12 seconds in the microwave. We did not do that with that because it doesn't need it, but I can tell you if you pop this into like a microwave for like eight seconds. Okay. Eight seconds. Enough that the that the steam, you know, kind of crisps it up and not soggy, you know what I mean? Yeah, Dang. this is really, really delicious. No, I'm good. That was breakfast. Now guess what? Five seconds later it's time for lunch. So here we go, we got, this is a kale and pepper focaccia. They probably, How would you they pronounce just, that? Focaccia. Focaccia, how many C's are in there? All right, yes, there were three C's, but I'm gonna show you something super great because if you go by the Healthy Jewish Kitchen, where can you find this cookbook? On um, Amazon.com, it's a really good price right now, go buy this book. But widely we, available but on the internet. look what we have in here, rosemary focaccia. Okay, so you can take this recipe, make the focaccia and then you can top it with tomato sauce and cheese and add vegetables on top and turn it into this or go to Artisan Bakery in Brooklyn. All right, okay. can we have a bite of this? Focaccia. Cheesy focaccia. Yeah. Oh. All right, that's called a crumb shot. Great crust, but like you said, spongy doughy. It's got air, it's got fluff. This is their pesto panini and it's got two toasted sourdough inside. So they're making the sourdough looks dank. This There's looks like, like really good sourdough. Right, look at it, it's fantastic. Not that the it's, toast is great. Do you know how you can tell that sourdough is really good? Big holes. Big holes, okay? Big, holes. Big it has to be holy sourdough, holy sourdough. So this one has pesto, avocado, arugula on it, and an egg, as if that wasn't like dayenu inside, there's an egg on top. It's very and dainty. <laughs> oh, there goes my egg. All right, oh, okay. it's, it's gone. Egg I'm down. Sorry. Egg down. Egg down. <laughs> Oh, like it looks like a, a banging oh. sourdough. Banging. All right? It's you heard so it here first. Banging sourdough. Banging sourdough. Oh That's right. God. This bread is so good. That's what I'm talking about. This the bread is, is so good. It's got a slight, like a tartness that you want, like a sour in the sourdough. Okay? But the texture, the texture just shows the right hydration because you got the right toast. And you got a good, even toast. I mean, it shows that you're using the right amount of water. So I'm going to let you we'll keep talking so that I can just keep eating? Yeah, keep eating. There's a lot going on in the salad. I think this could be like a meal for two people. This is the kind of salad that I think you would find in a Polish or a cookbook because it's pretty darn health conscious. Yep. Delicious and filling. This is, this is, we'll call this a Polish special. Like what's so great about the salad and why it's so good for you is because there's so many different colors here. Yeah, because it's you have pretty. so much nutrition in here. I think kids today, especially teenagers, they're all looking on Instagram and Facebook and they're seeing vegetables and food look really bright and beautiful. So they should have things like this at home. People should make food like this. This is how you get kids to eat salad. I want to tell all you people in New York City and all that fancy food, come out to Brooklyn because this is like one gorgeous salad. So that's the method I learned in cooking school. I went to school in Paris oh, wow. in 1995, and and we would spend like an hour. Like just we could talk and we could do everything else, and we knew how to roll, you know, how to cut the rolls. I still make collard rolls like this for my kids all the time.
Oh, 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 oh,